Howdy, y'all. You got the bulldog on the channel. I had a bad day this morning. A very, very bad day. Well, bad morning. But, you know, the morning comes at the start of the day. So usually when you have a bad morning, you have a bad day. It just follows. Uh, you can tell I got Mitzi down here at the work. and Because of my bad morning, I didn't have anything to drive down here. Uh, except for this. Last resort. Man, she made it. But I've had parts for this thing for quite some time. Uh, the brakes have been squealing on it. And as you can see, it's it's dark outside. But that's when I'm getting to work to it, getting to it to work on it. Um, the brakes have been squealing on this front end, so I listened to it closely. For about a year and now i'm going to stop and just throw a set of pads on it to and oh, hopefully it's it's not all the way through the through the the plate and into the caliper already uh also while i have it up i've been having some power steering fluid leakage and uh, my son put a line on it and it quit for a while but it started leaking again so i monitored it closely For a year and a half and while i got it up in the air i'll look at that too now before we go underneath this thing i just want you to know that everything that i've ever said about taking care of things washing underneath of it and you know checking your vehicle and not driving with problems i I'm that guy that shakes his cigarette at you and says, don't start this stupid, it'll give you cancer. I know I'm a hypocrite, but you know, bear with me. I'm always working on other people's stuff. I can't stop and work on my own. Now, just as a, so we get the terminology right, this thing here is called a hubcap. Now, I don't know, uh, millennials might know what it is. But I, what is the generation now? Is it Gen Z or Gen, uh, no, Gen X became before millennials, right? Or is it, I don't know. I don't keep up on the terminology on those. But this here is a hubcap. And the reason they call it a hubcap is because, well, it, it's a cap that goes over the hub. Okay, one of the things these hubcaps are good for is when you're working on something in your driveway, you flip it over and put your parts inside of it. Another thing that they're good for is flying off your vehicle whenever you hit a pothole and landing in the ditch. And then, you know, an enterprising young boy will go along picking them all up that he sees and never has to buy a dog bowl, ever. And the dogs end up eating out of you know, Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, GMC. It looks like these brakes held up pretty good. They're, get, they're getting thin, very thin, extremely thin, but they're not into the rotor. So I'm just gonna slap some pads on it, call it good. See? The inside pad, there's almost nothing left, but there's something left. I think I put those pads on there in 1998, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. So they held up good. Changing these things out is usually pretty simple. Now you can see on the rotor here, this is on the back side of the hub. So pulling these rotors off is a big deal. To turn them, you either have to disassemble everything and take it apart, or you have an on-car brake lathe, which is, I found out lately, very, very expensive. They thought it was extremely affordable at, you know, $18,000. Uh, they're working in a different tax bracket than I am. So 
I'm just throwing pads on this for now. Maybe someday some uh, enterprising company would like to sponsor a video, hint, hint, and give me a whole bunch of parts to put on. But till then, we're gonna redneck it and you know get by. First off, if you rotate it this way and then pull on this thing and squeeze the piston back as far as you can get it to go. And that tells you that the slides are good, the hose is good, the caliper's not stuck, all that kind of stuff. Put a constant pressure on it and just feel it move back. And it's going back, it's just slow. I put those hoses on there brand new in 1998. I think the calipers I put on there new in 1998. I don't know why they'd be, you know, showing their age. <sighs> Pull these pins and everything's floppy enough. It'll lift right off of there. I do have one thimble that I'm gonna have to do something with. Well, two thimbles that I'm gonna have to do something with. This here is a slide, and what it has in the middle of it is an over, there's an O-ring that goes around this inside the frame of the caliper. And all that rubber is deteriorated and gone, and so this was dancing. I'm gonna pull this one off here, flip the thing over, and I'll search around and see if I can find an O-ring. You'll need brakes anyway. Good thing. Mm. There's some pad left on this. I can just reuse that. Yeah. See? It's not quite to the rivet. Put them back on, right? Now you're gonna to have to reuse this clip here. Get a hold of it. Come on. Gimme, there we go. Just clips onto the new one. And you want to put your chirper if it still has a chirper, put it on the leading edge uh, or the top edge so that it squalls as you're backing up. That way it's not squalling all the time when you're going forward, but it gives you some warning. And that's what it was doing. It was squalling these chippers and they were actually on chirping enough that I noticed and and I did something about it right away. Yeah, after 12 months. Okay, I've got some O-rings here and we're gonna stick these in there. They're not the right ones, but you know, oh well. I found something that's just a little bit fat because everything is worn out. And you take and kind of squeeze them down in the groove that's in here. You take your thimble, preferably the shiny side towards it, but there is no real shiny side. And you work it in here, trying to not knock it out of the groove. Might try to rotate it, wiggle, you know, do all kinds of stuff. Try to get it. There we go. It slid in. That'll take up all the clacking, clackety clack that I've been hearing up here. And now we're gonna squeeze this back. I just use big jaw vice grips if you can get to it. If I don't drop it. Look it up square. You tighten them down to where you can lock it. And then wait. Let that fluid push its way back up in there. Ew. For some reason, those don't like to sit for 25 years. I don't have to push this thing all the way back because the rotors have been machined so it doesn't have to 
get all of its travel, just enough. They get a lot of crud built up around the edge of the piston and when you push it back, it tends to stick. That's why some places will want to go ahead and do everything whenever they're doing brakes because they never have to deal with a comeback, but you know, parts go bad. So they still have to deal with comebacks. You set your pad in here. This little spring goes towards the bottom, which when you get it turned upside down is the top. I mean, it's just to keep it from slapping around. This just sets in there like that. Don't kink your hose. And here we go. Slid right down in place. I have now realized that I haven't paid attention to where my camera was pointing. There you go. Now, I'll go ahead and get the bottom one stuck in. Okay, now up there, you see this line is new. I didn't put it on, my son did. And it was one of the first things he turned wrenches on. I am assuming that's where the problem's gonna be. You can see at the back of the pump where there's a lot of threads showing. Usually when them things are tight, they're pretty much hilted. Now the line, ooh, ooh, ooh. the line doesn't wiggle back and forth. Yeah, it doesn't rotate back and forth. It appears to be tight up here. So what I'm gonna do is take it loose and see what I find under there and see if uh, See so if an O-ring got left off, if it got cross-threaded, what the heck happened? Okay, it's the next day here, and we're looking at this line. And look at that. That, I do believe, is a crack. So, I don't think the boy did anything wrong. No, I can't see anything really on the inside, it's hard to tell, but this crack, if it is that, it's on the, it's not clear up out, out to the edge, but I don't see there's any reason for that thing to leak. I'm trying to get light in there, but it's a nightmare. Of course, there's oil inside of it. But unfortunately, I can't get a new line. Nobody has one. Some places can't even get one. I think there's one ordered for tomorrow. But, oh well. I'm going to put it back on there, tighten it up. See if it changed any? It probably won't. Because why would it? But I'm going to have to get it off the rack because we got one down there from out of state that needs to be done today. It came in last night. It looks like something might get done pretty quick and get them back on their feet or on their wheels. So I'm gonna put this together and we're gonna back it out the door. Now this should be a lesson to everybody. As you can see, this part is brand spanking new. It's been on the truck a year, less. I don't put any miles on this truck. So whenever somebody says, I put that part on so it's good, I can't trust that. Literally, I find new parts bad on a regular basis. Every single brand, every single store, and people will say, oh, that's why I don't go to this store. Every one of them, every single one of them does it without fail. The only thing you can count on is that you can't count on a lot of these parts. There's no reason for this to be cracked. It just is. Okay, while I had it up in the air, I saw the vent line was broke off the front axle and this stuff has been there 
it, it kind of bends, but not really. It, uh, I think it's been on there since the Ford administration. So, yeah, I replaced that whole hose. All right, I'm throwing the wheels back on here, and I think this is a good opportunity to show you why you don't over torque tapered lug nuts onto steelies. Yeah. You see that bevel? That's not a perfect taper. It, you know, goes down and whoop, right there. When they've been over torqued, they go down into the hole and then the nut deforms and pinches down on this end. And that's why you find on a lot of these older ones that have been ooga dooga a little bit too much, the nuts don't run out freely. Even when they're all lubricated and everything, they don't back off very easily. You can't just spin them with your fingers. They, they just run hard all the way. Now, when I was probably, uh, oh, I think 10 years old, I watched my dad put this wheel on and just zip one down and just let her hammer before zipping any the others down. And I thought, well, that's not good because when he zipped the other one down, the wheel shifted a little bit. In his defense, the impact we were using wouldn't twist off a wet noodle. But still, that's why you run them down evenly and don't over torque your lug nuts on anything. You over torque the lug nuts on aluminum rims and it will deform the rim. You over torque the lug nuts on steelies and it deforms the lug nut. And it gets to where it does not want to come off the threads because you've got the taper down here pinched down against the thread like a lock nut. Now some people might wonder why I've got, you know, medium aggressive tires on the back and smooth tires on the front. Those are bias supply trailer tires. And those are, you know, treaded radials. The reason for that is I'm broke. Have you seen the price of 16.5 tires? It's insane. If I had money, I've got a really nice set of 16.5 by 10 Keystone mags that I'd love to put on this truck. But tires are like $300 a piece and I couldn't afford $200 a piece for, you know, nine inch tires. So I bought the cheap option. And when I get tires to go all the way around the truck, I did buy a set of uh, 16 inch rims so I can get, you know, tires for 175 or somewhere around there. Uh, and I'm gonna put new tires all the way around the truck. And then these tires will go on my trailer. You know, trying to think ahead, but they'll be worn out by that time. I've got enough wheels to do my trailer also and everything will match. My trailer was made with a Chevy axle, so everything matches. So my spare tire fits. And I don't have to keep extra. Okay. Choke. That concludes this. I'm gonna to top off the fluid before I go home, but 
you know, it's really simple working on these older ones, but there's just more you gotta do as far as maintenance, which I usually don't do. Dollar for dollar, it's much cheaper to own one of these older square bodies, depending on what you use it for. If you're out there on the interstate, then yeah, the newer ones, they take that speed a lot better. You know, they'll, they'll rack up the miles more comfortably till you have problems and then you uh you have bills these things have you seen the price of these trucks lately Whew. blows my mind a lot of them got crushed because they needed a 300 hundred dollar repair and now that same truck would pull high four figures so think about that when you got that old junker sitting out in the fence row yeah Maybe you can resurrect it and have something that you can do, use to do the heavy work. This thing does heavy work. Like, comment, subscribe, hit your little bell notification, share it all around. We'll talk to you later.